Why Bigfoot? Well, when you're a paranormal investigation show and you live in Bigfoot country, it just makes logical sense to go on a Bigfoot hunt. I've personally been fascinated by the subject since I was a child and read any book I came across on the subject. Episodes of In Search Of and Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious World that featured the monster would be cause for repeated viewing. Indigenous and Caucasians alike have told stories about a large, hairy monster living in the wilds of North America for hundreds of years. Aboriginal people believe Bigfoot is a spirit, a guardian of the forests, and something that wants to be left alone. The first newspaper story appeared in the U.S. in 1784, and as European settlers colonized the prairies, Bigfoot sightings moved west to the Rocky Mountains. On October 20th, 1967, Roger Patterson shot 20 feet of film alleged to show a female Sasquatch 7 feet tall and weighing about 400 pounds. The footage captivated popular culture and remains a subject of debate. Okay, I'll take him back. In Canada, Bigfoot sightings go back as far as the 1800s when prospectors and miners from the Klondike Gold Rush in the Yukon told stories of wild ape men. Here in British Columbia, more than 200 Bigfoot sightings have been reported in the areas of Harrison Hot Springs, Pitt Lake, Whistler and Squamish, Hope, Mission, and on Vancouver Island. Most recently, reports span the length of the Bella Coola Valley and all adjoining creek and river systems. Ask around, and you'll hear stories of every variety. Figures are seen standing or crouching in the open at night, peeping into windows, banging on houses, throwing rocks and sticks and wood knocks, not to mention a putrid, lingering odor and tracks in the mud and snow. Stories range from weeks old to more than half a century. Bigfoot's appearance changes depending on where you live. Here and in the Pacific Northwest, it's been described as having long black or reddish fur and standing between 6 and 15 feet high. But in other parts of North America, there have been sightings of white-haired monsters and more lanky and shorter creatures. Even the temperament changes, with more aggressive encounters taking place in the southern United States. Recently, there's even encounters with dogmen, which are exactly what the name describes. And let's not forget sightings around the globe, with the Yeti in the Himalayas, the European wild man, and more. The creatures have been seen on every continent on the planet. There's one thing Bigfoot researchers can agree on, is that he truly is the hide-and-seek champion of the world. The monster isn't interested in connecting with people. In fact, all evidence points to it doing whatever it can to avoid us. Only when we encroach on his territory do hostile encounters seem to take place. This makes sense. As with hunting ghosts, we're the ones going into their domain. There's a reason why we can't find it and can't track it. It doesn't want to be seen. Sometimes we are welcome. Sometimes we're not. Indigenous people believe it doesn't want to be found and should be left alone. That's why it's important to respect the land and the creatures when hiking or camping in the woods. And it's definitely wise to do so if actively hunting the beast. Those of us who do are going into their territory and they will protect it and themselves. Something is out there. Now it's time to see what we want to believe can find. Why Bigfoot? That's a good question. So many stories based around uh, Sasquatch and, and Bigfoot legend of all sorts. So I just thought it'd be interesting uh, for the We Want to Believe team to go out and explore this. So we did this in two two hunts. Um, the first, we actually recruited Chris Bose. Chris Bose is a Aboriginal artist and storyteller full of all the local Aboriginal legends in regards to creatures in the woods. Chris was our guide and he took us kind of into some of the areas like near where he's had his, a couple of his own personal experiences. Like beautiful places. I think a place like this, it's called Haha Uyam, which means sacred. Like it's where you go to train to be a medicine person. It takes time to develop trust and it takes time for these kinds of stories. They're sacred, right? So people aren't just going to be like, blah, 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 like I am. <laughs> you know, people take time to trust. And like I was saying earlier about interview fatigue with elders, you know. It's hard to get a handle on these kinds of stories. People don't like to be thought of as a oh, crazy. B, 
it's acknowledging like we were talking about earlier that there's something greater than us out here and we are we are so not in control the one that stuck out the most for me though was definitely uh, when him and his cousin were kind of out in the area that we were in um, not the exact location but kind of nearby and in the distance they saw like what appeared to be a sasquatch it just shook me to my core because <clears throat> you hear these stories as a kid and the warnings from elders and aunties and uncles but then to actually like see it like physically like i saw it it was huge it was like 800 pounds of like giant reddish brown and it was a male right like in the the old footage from california patterson film patterson film like you can see it's a female because you can see breasts right when it's walking this was a male like it was huge like eight feet tall and like this wide like 800 pounds you know like a big big massive cow or a deer like just huge and no fear and it came towards us and i think that was what's terrifying for me is that it it had no fear <clears throat> it didn't run away it ran towards us and I, I, I blame my cousin to this day i'm like you ding dong <laughs> thanks <laughs> And so the Sasquatch Creek got its name in the 1800s because uh, during the gold rush, they would, uh, the miners would hear it in the spring and the winter. They would hear it in this one particular creek. It would do that howl. Oh. Do that again, Chris. is a beckoning kind of explored these sites with Chris um, and he told us many of his stories but what I thought was also interesting is uh, we stopped and he sort of did did an Aboriginal offering to the land as a way to kind of appease Bigfoot because he believes that if you, people go on the land and don't show it respect that it deserves and don't treat the environment well that's when these creatures, or especially Bigfoot, will come to you because he believes, there's a strong belief that Bigfoot is a protector of the mountains. He's a spiritual being that protects the land. And I know that kind of goes counterpoint to what a lot of other cryptozoologists believe, which is that Bigfoot is, is, is a flesh and blood creature somewhere between ape and man. Um, but we did these ceremonies, it was almost as like as a protection for us and to show our respect. And it was fascinating um, for Sarah and I to hear and watch Chris do this. So ate them likes apples and watermelons. Fruit, cantaloupe. That's what Zunatum likes. And it's good to offer food anyone, native, non-native. When you're out in this area, you wanna you wanna be respectful. We're already so invasive out here that uh, we want to walk in a good way and we want to just carry ourselves in a good way and take everything we leave and have a safe journey. So interesting from the standpoint of a, a newbie to this kind of thing. I've done ghost hunts before. I've not looked for monsters before, but it was fascinating uh, for Sarah and I to go out with someone like Chris who knows such a wealth of the mythology and such a strong uh, Aboriginal belief in in these creatures to hear his perspective his stories and and how it relates to the woods um, during the course of these episodes we're also uh, interviewing Shannon Negro of Into the Fray podcast she's a fantastic gatherer of stories and has big interest in Bigfoot and cryptids and other high strangeness we're going to hear some thoughts from her on, on Bigfoot and also Ken Gerhard as well all right so we've done our research on these creatures, explored their history, and scouted out our locations. 
It's time to gather our guides and actually begin the Bigfoot hunt. Next time on We Want to Believe. As you can see, the boat is slowly filling with water. While you were in the water, I heard some fantasy. Lucy Cosmo. 